Getty James McEwen played his 300th match for Grimsby last weekend The 28-year-old played his 300th league match for Grimsby Town last Saturday as the Mariners secured their Skybet EFL status just in time after tumbling down the League 2 table. Out of contract in the summer, the engaging Brummy would like to stay on at Blundell Park in spite of interest from elsewhere. McEwen was in both the Coventry and Walsall youth systems as a youngster, but as he divulges in our final Skybet EFLQ, he names Barnett's John Akind as his hardest opponent for scoring so many penalties past him, he regrets not saving a penalty in two Wembley final shootouts and he reveals that he only became a keeper in the first place because, you guessed it, he wanted to save penalties. Getty Grimsby Town vs Shrewsbury in the FA Cup No, I played for Coventry under 10s as a striker, but I decided that I quite liked saving penalties which I've learned that I'm not actually that good at anyway. I wanted to save penalties because I didn't want to run. I asked to go in goal. Coventry said I could have a trial in goal and then they released me after about two weeks. It wasn't probably my best life choice at the time. I was at Coventry for two years in total. I got released at under 11s and it wasn't until the under 15s that I got signed by Walsall as a goalkeeper, so it was quite a while afterwards. But I do look back and wonder. I literally hadn't played in goal at all. I remember telling my mum and dad that I wanted to be a goalie and they said, well, are you sure because you're doing okay up front? I said, no, no, I want to be a goalie, that's it, when I played with my brothers who were older than me, I was always more than happy to go in goal and have them blast the ball at me, but even looking back now I'm not too sure what it was that made me want to do it. I was not bad as a striker and definitely better back then as a striker than I was as a goalie. It obviously worked out okay in the end. Getting Keown says the National League playoff final in May 2016 is his best moment. Getting promoted at Wembley, Grimsby beat Forest Green Rovers 3-1 in the National League playoff final in May 2016. And winning there after losing there, they lost the same final on penalties to Bristol Rovers after a 1-1 draw in 2015, would be enough reason in itself, but also because of how long it took us to get out of the conference with the near misses that we'd had. So that's a bit of a no-brainer for me. We'd been in four playoffs in a row and got a little bit closer each year, so to win there was special. When I was at Peterborough, I had got promoted to the championship, but I was only the number two there. The following year I was in the Conference North with Boston United. Then I went to Holland with semi-professional club RKS Leonidas. then I came here to Grimsby, so to get back into the Football League was quite big for me personally as well. And cause the club had been in the conference for so long, six seasons, what made it special as well was that after the final against Bristol Rovers the year before, I was the only player from that team who had a contract for the following season, but everyone stayed. One of the hardest things for me has been the turnover of players each year at the club. I know that's just the way it is and that long contracts are saved for the top level in general, but it was strange in the way that I knew we had a good side there, that we weren't a million miles away from promotion, but I was thinking, half the team might not be here next year. The fact that everyone wanted to stay together for another season made winning at Wembley the next year even more special. Even now to this day, the players from that team are still a group chat. Normally at the end of each season, everyone leaves a group chat as soon as possible because you don't want your phone going off all the time. But this group chat is still going. Without a doubt that dressing room for those couple of years was the best I've ever played in, which makes a big difference. I remember walking off at halftime, we were leading 2-0, and Toto, Messiale, was crying. I'll never forget that. I said, why are you crying? He said, because we're so close, aren't we? I said, Toto, there's 45 minutes yet, then right after half time, they missed an easy chance. And then they scored and you're thinking, surely not, the relief after the game was huge. I remember coming down the steps after we'd picked up the trophy. I never cry but I saw my family and I started crying. I remember the gaffer, Paul Hurst, walking past and saying, what are you crying for, you big softy, I can't speak highly enough of Paul Hurst as a manager. I think that would be the one thing with any player who's ever played under him. He has obviously had to make decisions to release players at times, but even those lads didn't have a bad word to say about him. He's done really well at Shrewsbury and proved himself there. Getty Grimsby Town vs Lincoln City in Skybet League 2 is saving a penalty at Wembley. It bugs me a lot. The first time I played there we lost to Wrexham on penalties after a 1-1 draw in the FA Trophy Final in May 2013, then in the Bristol Rovers Playoff Final we lost on penalties. 
When I grew up and I wanted to play in goal, I thought about playing at Wembley and then I became a goalie and you want to save a penalty to win your team something at Wembley. I've had the opportunity to do that twice and I've not done it, so that really does bother me. I take playing there and winning again obviously, but as a goalie you're never really going to be the hero that much. I felt massively responsible after the Bristol Rovers game because I thought that I should have saved a penalty. So if I could change that, I would. Hardest opponent. Abeo Akinfinwa always scores against me, but I would say John Akin at Barnett. He must have scored about six penalties past me. Before a game I'll always watch the penalty taker and previous penalties he's taken. John Akin just goes in every direction. I'll think, I've got you, I've got you, but he scored two against me in the same game last season. He doesn't take a big run up and there's no set thing with him. He just scores past you. Least favorite away ground, Gates head. I cannot stand football stadiums that have an athletics track around the pitch. You feel like you're so far away from the stands and it's always windy in them. And cause of the day we lost there in the playoffs, 4-2 on aggregate in 2013-14. We were getting closer. The previous year Newport were just better than us, but I thought we should have beaten Gates head. I made an awful mistake for a goal, but even then we got back level with 10 men. Then we went to 9 men and lost. So for me it's Gates head. I hope I never have to go back there, but I'm sure I will one day. Getty Grimsby v Bristol Rovers in the conference playoff final at Chinese, although since we had our little girl, my missus has gone off takeaways a bit and it really upsets me on a Saturday that we don't have a takeaway. My dish of choice would be something really basic, something like chicken fried rice, curry sauce and chips. It's hard to have one if we've had an away game anyway, because we generally back late here. I find it harder to get away with eating something bad because being a keeper, I don't run as much as the outfield lads. We get all the stats this year, which I've really enjoyed having, and my aim this year has been to try and get up to 7 kilometers in a game. I'm hoping I might have got it this week because I sprinted the length of the pitch when we scored the winner on Saturday, so maybe I might have got up to 7 kilometers. But I feel like I have to try and be more careful about what I eat because I probably don't do as much in that respect. Funniest thing you have seen in a dressing room. This season Martin Wolford went to pick up his bag to take it home and there was just a microwave in his bag. The microwave had been taken out of the kitchen and put in his bag. Everyone had a laugh and then two days later, he went to get in his car and the microwave was on his passenger car seat with the seat belt on. It's mainly Ben Davies who does that. For a 36-year-old man, he's like a little kid, genuinely like a little kid. That was up there. That's definitely the most printable one I can tell you anyway. Martin took it well. He's had a bad year with fines, so he has to be careful what he does now. Getting Keown clasped at a Bayo Akinfin was his hardest opponent when I was younger, it would have been Peter Schmeichel. He's the one who made me want to play in goal. But as I've got older, definitely in the last 7 or 8 years, the person I most look up to would be AP McCoy. I think he's amazing and I think that jockeys in general are probably the toughest sportsmen in the world. There's no way I'd want to jump over a 7-foot fence on a horse going at 30 miles an hour, fall off and then get back on in the next race. The one thing I look for when I coach the kids in the academy here at Grimsby, I want a goalie to be brave. It doesn't mean you're going to be a great goalie by any means, but if you've got that, you've got a will to get in the way of things. If you try to compare it, if a jockey is scared when he's about to jump a fence on a horse, I'm guessing the horse would sense that and maybe pull up a little bit, so there's maybe a comparison to be made. It's not just that, it was also the fact that E.P. McCoy was champion jockey every year, which was unbelievable. The other thing about jockeys is that they do their job basically starving. If I'm hungry, I do not want to speak to anybody, but I look at jockeys and some of them are close to 6 feet, only weigh 10 stone and they're surviving on jelly babies. I've got a lot of admiration for them. If you had the power, what one thing would you change about the game? The way that players speak to refs and the way that refs speak back to players. It could be a lot better and that would make a big difference. Obviously, it's easy to say something in the heat of the moment but I still don't think that's a big enough reason to speak to a ref in a certain way. He's a human being and you wouldn't want someone speaking to you like that. At the same time, there are certain refs that you try and speak to and they completely ignore you basically. I think the game would be better for it. I know people talk about VAR, but part of what makes football entertaining is that you are relying on a human being to make those decisions. 
when it goes against you, it is awful but more respect in how players and refs speak to each other would make the game better. Getting Keown says his boyhood hero was Peter Schmeichelli don't know if this is printable, but when I was 18 or 19, I had a reserve game at Peterborough and I was desperate for the toilet. It was early in the second half. Normally I would go at half time, but I just hadn't gone this game. I was desperate and I honestly didn't know what I was going to do. I thought, I can't play because I can't move, I can't walk, I asked the linesman, the time. He said, what do you mean, what's the time? You've only just come out for the second half, I ended up, and you're not going to believe this, saving a penalty in the game, but I'd already wet myself a little bit. I just couldn't hold it. Without a doubt that's my most embarrassing moment. Which player in history would you like to play alongside? I was going to say Nemanja Vidic so that I wouldn't have to come for crosses because he'd had everything. But I'll go for Paolo Maldini so that I can roll him the ball and I don't have to worry about kicking it. He can look after it for me. I'd play behind AC Milan's back four anytime. And also I love players like Maldini and Ryan Giggs who have stayed somewhere their whole career and achieved a lot of things. It does mean a lot to me that I have stayed at this club so long because often people see you as a lower league footballer and they think that you must move around a lot. So yes, it means a lot to me because I've had so many ups and downs here and come through them. Think fast, act faster with Skybet's new in-play features. Get the full picture faster with every live score in one place, grouped by competition on the UK's.